All right. Hey, everyone. It is week one. Uh, this is a data visualization. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit of practice. Um, I'm really just going to riff it. Um, and I've opened our studio here, as you can see, and I've created some objects. I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means. And uh, we're going to go through some basic code and um, just some very basics about stuff that happens in R. Um, so first of all, you see again that there are four windows and you can manipulate how they you view them, right? So you can minimize and maximize these windows as you see fit depending on what you need that day or at that period of time. Right now I'm going to focus on these two windows that are the script window and the console. Uh, and you see I have these lines up at the top of these R scripts. So let's say that you want to start an R script. An R script is really a text file that also has executable code that you can save for later. So it is the set of commands and any comments that you would like to add to those that you would save if you wanted to say replicate something. If you wanted to um, perform a series of functions or do some things to data and you want to save it and, and, and save it in its own uh, distinct file that you can call back later and re-execute, that's, that's what you do with an R script. Okay, uh, so I've got an R script here. So obviously you would go to file. Well, you can't see because I've cut this off. But you would go to file and you would go to a new file and an R script and you would create a new one like this and you would you know write something like a new script or something like that and then you would go to save and then you'd save it and it would be called what you know whatever new script.r and then you would save it, right? And then you could go and you could do all the things that you want to do inside that script. You keep saving it, then you can close it all down and go and call it later and it will still be there and you can execute and the same things will happen inside R. Okay. You see up here, I did this thing that was subtle with the, uh, the number sign, the pound sign, the hashtag, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and this, what this does is it makes sure that when R is going through your R script and trying to execute commands and functions, that it does not read those particular lines so that you can add things that it doesn't understand, right? Because if I took this away and I tried to execute, it would say error because I don't know what the hell that means, right? This tells R not to read that line, and then you can write whatever you want. And this is very useful because new functions, new commands, um, particularly involved functions, commands, sets of you know, long loops or something like that, um, code that might be new to another person if you're sharing code, if you're working on a project together, these kinds of things. All of this is good reason for you to um, add a lot of comments to your scripts. So I will add some comments as I'm going through so you understand what I'm talking about. Um, but that's how you do it. You do it with the uh, hashtag or pound sign. Okay. This line right here is a very basic creation of an object in R. Um, R is an object-oriented language. It saves things in its temporary memory um, with labels and it assigns values, right? So this line, if I'm reading it, says uh, create something called apple and have it take a value of seven. All right? So if I execute that line, nothing happens, but it you see down in the console, it went down a line. If nothing happens, that's usually good. That means it executed without a problem. Now, if you want to see what Apple is, now you can print it 
first you can print it just by writing apple and running the line and you see down here that apple is now an object that has taken the value 7 you can also say print apple that's another command and it means the same thing in this case but the print function will actually become useful to you later on so we'll go back to apple uh, I'm going to show you something else that might be useful to you at some point, and that is the semicolon and what it does, because what it does is it actually breaks a line, and you can do two, you can execute two separate functions in the same way. So instead of writing up here, apple gets seven, and then down here, print apple, I can simply uh, do this with a semicolon, and now what it's doing is it's saying, Apple takes the value 7, break line, print Apple. Uh, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create another one now called Banana that gets 8. Um, I'm going to move this up just for now. You don't have to do this. You could keep it on separate lines. I'm going to create this object called Banana that gets the value 8, and then I'm going to print it. See, it, it immediately created it, and then it also showed it to me to show me what the value is underneath. Now here's what's great and interesting and useful about R and R's objects. You can actually manipulate the objects and have, perform functions to them and have them interact with each other. So you can perform math on R objects, right? So Apple is, remember, has the value seven, banana has the value eight. So I can run, um, let's say I, I want to, interact, call it fruit, gets apple times banana, right? Okay, now something happened, but I didn't print it, so let's print it and see what happens. It takes the value 56 because it knew that apple was uh, a numeric that took the value seven, banana was a numeric that took the value eight, and it knew what to do with those things, right? Now, I'll, for purposes of sort of clean code right now, I'm just going to keep using these semicolons. All throughout, you can add little comments, and you should, especially early on, so that you can remember what you're doing. Right? Uh, the line below creates an object apple and gives it the value seven. Something like that, right? Now, that line is particularly easy, so it's not something that you're likely to forget, but just in case, you could do it anyway, and this will get you into good practice because later on you'll be working with functions that will be more complicated, and you will forget, I promise, with all the code that you're gonna see, because we're going from zero to like Mach 2 pretty fast, uh, you're going to want to have comments um, telling you what all these things mean. Something else to know about R and objects is the uh, objects have particular classifications. They, they belong in certain groups and certain types of objects um, take certain R functions in a way that others do not. So this will become problematic later on. And I will probably do a short video that is um, just about class of objects. But for now, I'm going to introduce you to the class function. And if you've noticed, I've already run at least one function, and now I'm running another one. This one is called class or running a command. This command called class has parentheses. So it says class, open, close parentheses. Basically every command, every function you've got in R has the same basic structure like that. You're going to have uh, the name of the command, the name of the operation, and open, close parentheses, and then you do something inside. 
I can check what type of object an object is, what class it takes. But remember, I created Apple. Let's say I want to figure out what kind of object Apple is inside R. It's called a numeric, or you might see it called a double. Numeric and double are the same thing. As you would expect, the class of banana and the class of fruit are all the same. But there are different types of objects in R. They're not all going to be numerics. Sometimes they're text or character strings. Sometimes they are what are called factors that take a look. That, that is actually a little bit more complicated and takes some explanation, which is why I'll do a separate video for those. Um, and um, integers, where there's no decimals. Um, let's see. Uh, and then they could be more complicated, like um, fruit instead of being, well, we'll call it um, basket, can be a series of values. Now this is teaching you a new a new way to code something. A basket, if we print basket, so I just threw in a new little piece of code there. The the C this this situation. It's called concatenate 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 yeah I think I spelled it right uh, that is sort of binding them together right it's binding these things together so basket is now not just a single piece of information it's three pieces of information that are bound together in a vector uh, so when I look at basket, it gives me back not one piece of information, but three, the one, five, and eight that I told it to take. What is interesting about that is that basket can now interact with, let's say, Apple. So that little asterisk is the multiplication in R. I executed basket times apple, and R was smart enough to take the vector basket with its three pieces of information, its three numeric values, and multiply it through apple through each time. So it became uh, one times seven, and then five times seven, and then eight times seven, so all, all together. Um, so you're, you're starting to see here how um, objects can interact with each other and how objects can be more complicated than just a simple one piece of information. Now eventually we're going to get to where objects are also complete data sets, matrices, arrays, um, lists which are um, very complicated, but I'm going to have a separate um, video for you just about objects and, and their structure. Okay. Um, all right, so that's enough for this particular video. Uh, I'm going to stop. Have a good day. Stay safe.